Hello, this is Hazel Jane Taro and this is my first um, unboxing video um, that I've filmed uh, and today I have just received the Mystical Healing Reading Cards. Um, now, I have to be honest, this has been a bit of lockdown retail therapy. I had been doing something of a depth year this year where I'd acquired a lot of new decks last year and really to make sure that I got to know the ones that I already had, I had decided I wasn't going to buy any more decks this year. And I've been doing well until I was browsing online late at night and <laughs> I ordered I ordered this. So I've got as far as the end of May without ordering any decks, so that's not too bad. Anyway, um, the Mystical Healing Reading Cards, um, it was really the, the art on a couple of images that I saw online um, that struck me. Um, I have no idea really what the system of this oracle is. Um, so this is well and truly a first impression because I've only seen a handful of cards online. The claim made by this deck in the blurb is quite something. So um, healing everything from fear and anxiety to ancestral patterns and karma this deck will be one of the most profound and life-changing you have ever encountered. So that's some claim. Um, the deck is by Ina Segal and it's illustrated by Jake Badl Badl Badley. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Jake Badley and Ina Segal. So here we go. Be gone plastic. Okay, so ooh, all right, so it's a magnetic closure box. That's really nice, all decorated inside. Oh. Um little book or fairly substantial book. We'll look at that properly in a minute, but 87 pages. Okay, and here are the cards. Oh, they're in a plastic insert, which I don't really like, but I can take that out, I can dump that. Um, there's such a waste, all this extra packaging that they put on these decks. Anyway, the, there's the backs. So they're kind of like, they would remind you of maybe Leonardo da Vinci's, like, little sketchy drawings in the corner of a page or something just the pen li pen line drawings hmm I can't, re can't recognize any writing it almost looks as if it's backwards like it's starting at a right margin unless I've got these upside down which is possible nope that's the right way up so Let's have a look. So I find it's useful when I get a new deck to just have a look at what the system is first. So these cards have been created out of a profound knowing that we need to have access to a greater wisdom each card asks you to take more responsibility for how you think, feel, and how you show up in the world. Hmm. So, it looks like there's plenty of reading to do in this deck, in this book. Um, and interestingly, the creator here is encouraging you to sit with the image first before um before you would actually look it up in the book and ask yourself some questions about the image um before you before you look it up um, and look at the intended meaning so that's really interesting this deck looks like it's totally designed to be read intuitively um primarily so let's see what we've got oh i'm going backwards they're numbered you have support okay start from the start 
access clear thinking. Now the colours are showing up a little gaudier on film than they are when I'm looking at the actual card. The, the orange there, for example, on that wall is a slightly more muted, more um, aged kind of looking orange than it, it's coming up very, very vividly there in the in the video. Assimilate life experience. Oh, awaken your vulnerability. Wow, that's an intense image. This is like an angel has been sawn in half. But it's interesting, like the both upper and lower parts of the bodies are framed, one with a circle, one with a rectangle. There's a sense of the body being kind of commodified or cut up and displayed for others. Yeah, I can see that the art in this deck is really going to probe, some, you know, lead to some interest in journaling and, and think, you know, thoughts inspired by the image. Um, I've mentioned before that I'm not an especially intuitive reader, or maybe I am. I mean, I might be doing myself a bit of a disservice there, but what I mean is when I read tarot, I'm very much looking at, okay, this is the Six of Swords. What does the Six of Swords mean? And then how is the image in front of me showing me that and that meaning? So are they interpreting it or changing it slightly? But I'm still referring back to my learning on the tarot and words with Oracle tends to push me into a more intuitive space and this art really seems to be headed in that direction. Become more objective. Mm. It's like an, the feet on the moon reminds me of the high priestess but obviously the, the form of the figure and the background it's like um, it's Christ on the cross really but it's a female and it's an angel and it's bat-like wing and an angel wing and Gosh, there's so much going on in these images. Break addiction. Contemplate death and beyond. Ooh. Create boundaries. That was one of the ones I saw before I ordered this. This is a really interesting image. You know, the mirrors, the faces. What you show others and what you keep to yourself. Mm. Develop stronger concentration. Embrace meditation. Noble your soul. Examine your integrity. I like that. You know, are you being manipulated by someone else? Are you manipulating others? The puppet is such a strong strong image like archetypal image I'm curious now looking at this I'm wondering did this art really exist before or did the artist create the art to go with the keywords and, and concepts that the deck creator had in mind because some of this art is is so abstract you know it doesn't really immediately speak to the keywords but I suppose that's the idea you know that you're going to sit and contemplate the image and the keywords and think about it like focus on higher truth that I can see although I'm not sure of higher truth being presented as the you know traditional 
white mom with a beard, kind of gold image. It's just kind of very traditional in a sense of, of, of a depiction of higher truth. Ground yourself. And that's like Mother Mary in the background there. It's a no. I like cards like this in, a, in an oracle deck. It's a yes. Um, is it Work Your Light has that as well? Yes. And in the guidebook, when you look up the card, it just says yes, 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 for a page and a half. <laughs> oh, which is great. Um, yeah, sometimes you need a straight answer. Learn from karma. Listen to your guardian angel. Listen to your intuition. Oh. It's very attractive art in some ways. You know, the, there's a strangeness to it, but I mean, you have your own opinion. You could look at this and think it's horrifying and awful, or you might look at it and think it's absolutely beautiful. So there's, I guess... It's not much of a, I'm not telling you much by telling you what I think of it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but I find the the kind of round lines of it, um, the muted colours and the sort of old style to it, um, you know, to the shading and the composition, um, I find that quite attractive to look at. Recognise divine timing. What I don't really get with this, um, I guess, is what? Release fear. I can get that. You know, somebody hiding behind a door to release fear. Some of them, um, definitely, I would, I suppose that's the whole idea. It'll I'd take me a bit of time to work with it to figure out what it might mean. Relieve anxiety. This cloth ribbon across in her hand makes me think of a comfort blanket, you know, that a child might have to relieve their anxiety. Relinquish control. Ooh. Hmm. I'm having lots of. Um, this is <laughs> this is obviously my first unbox again. Um, I'm thinking lots of things as I'm looking at the cards, but I'm not saying anything. Um. <laughs> So I've maybe not quite got the whole concept of this yet. Reverse disassociation. Hmm. Show self-respect. Step into the unknown. That's the image on the cover of the box. Stop breaking agreements. Oh, huh. well, that's a strange one. Because who's to say that you are breaking agreements? I mean, I suppose you would have to trust that the card wouldn't come up if you weren't. But it's, that seems very specific. You know, we're stepping to the unknown. It's kind of very broadly applicable, but that's pretty specific. I suppose it's a test of the deck, really. Um, you know, if that was to come up, and you're like thinking, I haven't broken any agreements. Hmm, that's interesting. Maybe agreements with yourself. Things that you've promised yourself could come into that too. Um, take positive action. I'm suddenly put in mind of the... Oh, what is the artist? Um... Oh, this is going to annoy me now. I'm not going to remember the name. The uh, Ciccoli, the Nicoletta Ciccoli um, art that's been repurposed for a tarot deck and an oracle deck, neither of which I have. I love Nicoletta Ciccoli's art, but somehow I've it's a bit too abstracted. I've thought I probably wouldn't read with it very well as a tarot or an oracle. But there's something about maybe that card in particular that just reminds me of. Nicoletta Ciccoli, maybe that's partly why I thought this art looked quite attractive too. 
temper your criticism. So you've got the three see here and speak. Transform anger. Oh, oh, I really don't like this one. Dex, do this. The one random sideways card. Unlock your heart. That makes me think that maybe the art wasn't specifically done for the deck. Unless they have a particular reason for that being sideways. Um, well, I suppose if it was being cropped, you know, they could have cropped it into a, an upright card. Mm, I don't know. And you have support. Okay, first impressions are that I really do still like the aesthetic. I like the little kind of fake age drift border on them. They have that kind of slightly shiny, big kind of oracle deck size card um, that's fairly flexible. I quite like that kind of cardstock. I know people prefer thick matte cards these days, but I struggle um, to ruffle shuffle. And I like a nice bendy deck <laughs> um, to be able to to shuffle easily. They're a little bit almost too wide for me to hold from knuckle to knuckle, but just about. Um, I know some people shuffle a long ways, but I am always going to throw them on the floor if I do that. <laughs> um, I would ordinarily, if I'm just doing a one card draw, I keep shuffling until a card falls out. Um, or I really fumble the shuffle and that tends to be the card then that I take as my message. So I'm just going to draw the top card here. Explore your ancestry. So I can have a look at it. So explore your ancestry. So I'm looking at the cogs behind the figure there and the cogs turn in and she's then on on a pulley system sort of on strings that seem to be attached to a mechanism that's relating to the cogs so you can see then that the the ancestry then of what has come before is what's behind the scenes and operating this figure this dancer um she looks like a dancer because the the ribbons of the shoes there's a little egg under her feet which maybe makes me think about what what you're going to birth, what's coming next, what you're going to create, but that that is really delicate. You know, it could be crushed very easily. Um, and it's all that the amount of weight that you put on top of that is dictated by this mechanism that's holding her up or going to let her fall down and, and crush that. So... Yeah, I can see you could get quite a powerful message about the importance of ancestry in the past from that. Um, she seems to be holding the ribbon she's holding could be a measuring tape, could be um, musical notation. She also seems to have a pulley, like a, a, a bell pull in front of her where she could pull on that and adjust what's happening to so she's not without control as well. So let me just have a look in the guidebook to see what sort of information you get for one card. So for 13, explore your ancestry. So your personality is essentially a mixture of your karmic tendencies and characteristics you've inherited from your family. While some of these inherited characteristics are helpful and allow you to expand on the talents and abilities you have brought back, brought with you, Others, more suppressed aspects could be holding you back from becoming all you're destined to be. So it's not necessarily talking about past lives or anything like that. It's talking very specifically about your family of origin. Um, you know, it, I suppose, you know, it doesn't really say here inherited from your family. Is that genetically um, from your birth parents or is that, you know, behaviorally through your family that you were raised with, if that was different from your your birth parents. Um, I suppose you could interpret that how it would apply to you. 
This card asks you to examine how the shadowy, unrefined aspects of your parents' behaviours have crept into your life and are limiting your growth and maturity. So that's very specific, um, saying that you need to think about your parents. Not everybody is raised by their parents. Um, or there could be other significant figures that have affected you from your family. Um, and then it suggests some of the negative behaviours that we could have coming from our parents. Um, so then there's an action. So there's a re sort of a reflection and then an action. Try to see yourself objectively, recognise with such judgement when you're repeating old familiar patterns um, and take your, a moment to give yourself another option. Okay, so this deck seems to be um, what's well, called mystical healing. It's not talking about physical health where obviously I know a lot of card readers choose not to read on health questions. Um, the healing aspect seems to be more a sort of personal development um, aspect of, of healing work. Um, so I think I'm going to enjoy working with this. Um, I might do a follow-up um, in due course when I've had a chance to, to really work with it and give you a proper review. Um, but there is my very first ever unboxing video and that was the uh, Mystical Healing Reading Cards by Inna Seagal and Jake Baddeley. Thanks for watching.